morning, everyone. Welcome to worship this morning. Can I just draw your attention to um, one notice in particular, which is for the next Cathy Church on the 27th of August. And the theme there will be school day memories. So if you'd like to take part in a guess who quiz, um, we'd invite you to bring along or send in in, in advance um, photographs from your school days. The service this morning has been prepared by the worship group using material from the Church of Scotland weekly worship resource. Let's prepare ourselves for worship with prayer. Loving God, we gather in worship today because you sought us and found us. We come as we are, knowing a place is prepared for us. We bring what we have, to receive what you give to us. Bread of life for the world, grow your kingdom within us. Amen. Let's worship together and sing our first hymn, Seated with Masks On. From heaven you came, helpless babe, the servant king. Hymn 374. <laughs> reading is from Kings with Pam Mickey. Today's reading is taken from 1 Kings 19 verses 4 to 8. But Elijah himself went a day's journey into the wilderness 
and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he may die. It is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat. Otherwise, the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. Let's pray. This prayer is based on the reading we've just heard from Kings, 1 Kings 19. We are tired, Lord, weary beyond thinking about it, weary over praying through it, so weary, worn of words, no glimpse of glory, so weary we have had enough. We've no idea the road ahead, we've not been this route before, no way is coming clear, just wilderness, enough to lose ourselves. And the only path we easily find is the one of least resistance. Yet there's energy to run and keep running, to avoid and evade, to distract and deny, to turn and to tilt away. Can we be found even so? When we get there, when it's enough, there's nowhere to go but there and nothing to have but what we receive. Shelter us from the searing sun, shield us from the scratching wind, save us from the time of trial. Let's join now in saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. As we come into the week when the COVID restrictions are supposedly ended, we can ask ourselves, are things looking up? Is the impact of COVID-19 on daily life reducing? Vaccin vaccinations are well underway. Restrictions and movement and meeting up are reduced. However, there's still widespread co caution and life is by no means normal or entirely carefree. Gathering opportunities are limited, and we continue to wear face masks here in church, in shops, and in other crowded places. We are not able to be spontaneous in what we do, and with whom we meet. Are you noticing a long-term weariness? Even if things, generally speaking, are looking more hopeful, what we know in our minds and bodies, who we are, and what we bring in prayer and to worship, it's very much imprinted by the difficulties and constraints of the recent past. Our bodies keep the score. What does the reading from First Kings say to those who feel weary and depleted after COVID? The passage that Pam read gives us an opportunity to reflect on Elijah's flight in, in his wilderness immediately following his great contest on Mount Carmel with the followers of the god Baal. 
These few verses are an intimate portrayal of the great prophet Elijah's own crisis following his dramatic victory on Mount Carmel. The backdrop to Elijah's crisis has resonance for us today. There had been a significant climatic disaster from a three-year drought which sorely tested the economy and stability of Israel. The drought's privations intensified existing inequalities and King Ahab's weak moral compass paved the way for blatant collective transgressions in the worship of Baal and not the one true God, Yahweh. But here in our reading, we see the personal impact of this national crisis on Elijah himself. Elijah is the strong, uncom uncompromising leader who gave his all and won a dramatic victory. Now he reaches his limit. Finally, the exhaustion and conflict, the burden of being the most wanted man in the kingdom, takes its toll, and his response is to run and keep on running. The prophet, whose calm, prayerful leadership faced down the frenzied contortions of his opponents, is chased by his own demons and desperate fear. If we were describing ourselves or someone else in a similar state, we would probably use the term burnout. Between Carmel and Horeb is Elijah's dip between mountains, a journey into no man's land of the desert, where no one would choose to go. And yet it's here, a place of encounter as significant as the two mountain top moments between which it's wedged. This is the in-between, the no space or wilderness of despair and exhaustion, where even the voice in the deep silence is not yet heard, where the sense of distance from God is not even articulated in prayer. This is a raw experience of despair the fragile realisation of utter loss and vulnerability. Even Elijah's name, my God is Yahweh, seems a mockery. Yet there is a prayer of sorts even here, and Elijah's name holds true, for his God is not only to be heard, but to be found in the call, and not only in the dramatic conflict, but in the nothing space of utter lostness and exhaustion. After Elijah sleeps, he is woken suddenly by an angel and given bread and water. At some point, Elijah is running from his past and the conflict becomes a running to, a journey towards something or someone. Further on in chapter 19, we find, we find that what's coming will be utterly life-changing, a profound remaking of his prophetic calling and identity. But for now, this intervention of ordinary bread and water and sleep and journeying through the, inter through the wilderness marks a shift in Elijah's understanding of God. Yahweh, the holy God, whose jealousy and justice the pre prophet defended, is also the one who sees his utter weariness who comforts and is present in his despair, who nudges him, saying, get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. Only after acknowledging that point of his exhaustion, his failure and his limits, is Elijah able to keep going. There are no victorious shortcuts to Horeb, the Mount of God. In the wilderness valleys between the mountaintop experiences of Horeb and Carmel, this picture of Elijah's encounter gives us a fresh insight into God's presence and care. So it's a timely word of encouragement that God will meet our needs wherever and whoever we are. We're now going to watch a short video reflecting on Elijah being given the sustenance of bread 
and Jesus as the bread of life. The video picks up on the popularity of bread making in lockdown and was filmed on an IKEA tea towel to accompany, accompany Malcolm Gordon's song, Come You Who Are Weary, which is set to Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Our next reading is by Alison MacLeod. Our second reading is from John chapter 6, verse 35 and verses 41 to 51. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Amen, and thanks be to God for this reading from his word. Our gospel reading today reflects on Jesus as the bread of life. The giver is the substance of the gift. It starts with an inspirational verse 35. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me, you will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus as the bread of life is an image that occurs in the gospel according to John. This invitation to come and partake is offered freely and is an echo of Isaiah 55 verse 1, an invitation to abundant life. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the water. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. This invitation is a unique claim without any limit to its generosity. In verse 42, there's an attempt to limit Jesus to his origin, saying, Is not this Joseph's son whose parents we know? Implying that how can a man with a known name and address be from God and of God? 
Jesus' response is clear. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. In verse 49, Jesus refers to their ancestors who ate manna in the wilderness and died. He paints this in a new light, the bread that only lasted a day is in sharp contrast to the origins and efficacy of the living bread that came down from heaven, saying in verse 51, that whoever eats of this bread will live forever. This reading invites us to reflect and respond to the invitation to receive the bread of life. Should we slow down, spend more time in prayer, and reflect on verse 35, allowing for it to feed and nourish us in a deeper way? There's other questions to reflect on. How are we fed and sustained by God? What bread are you being offered? Think about people, relationships, and experiences that have fed, nourished, and sustained your life. We can be fed and nourished by others in lots of ways. For example, words of encouragement when you're unsure of yourself, someone offering some wisdom and guidance when you need it, someone saying, I forgive you. Is this all part of the bread of life? How does the radical generosity of Jesus' gift of life speak into that? God gave us the gift of Jesus, but that gift was not necessarily appreciated appropriately. We can always reject a gift or misunderstand the intention of the giver. When have we been bred in someone else's life? Have we nourished, sustained, and strengthened others? And what is the deep hunger and thirst in all of us that longs to be satisfied? In our Christian community, what does belonging to Christ and one another mean? And what are we learning at this time? A life changed by love? A new ethic of love is laid on all who believe in Christ. The bread of life speaks and nourishes on this too, in that we participate in the life of Christ as bread. The self-offering of Christ, the bread of life, is the basis of the new community and the identity of the individual. God recreates a community to imitate God's self and self-given. During lockdown, a lot of us started baking bread. Have any of you been given a starter batch of sourdough to make bread? It holds the potential to become bread and to feed and nourish. Is Jesus the starter batch in us? And from that, can we become the bread of life for the world? We too all can go out into the world feeding, nurturing and cultivating kindness and forbearance, especially in these difficult times. We'll now join together in singing hymn 251, I the Lord of Sea and Sky.
stay. Lean in and try it. Step forward and grab it. Open arms and embrace it. Unclench fists so you touch it. Sit back and enjoy it. Breathe deep and inhale it. Slow down to allow it. Lend an ear so you hear it. Lift your eyes, you may see it. Widen your mouth to receive it. Taste and see it. Bread broken and gifted. Life for the world and kingdom come. Bread for a hungry world, O Lord, hear my prayer. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Bread of life, given for this world this day, O Lord, hear our prayer. For all the nations in turmoil, O Lord, hear our prayer. For our warming planet, O Lord, hear our prayer. For our cities and neighbourhoods, O Lord, hear our prayer. For our neighbours in sorrow, O Lord, hear our prayer. For our suffering sisters and brothers, O Lord, hear our prayer. For all the households represented here today, O Lord, hear our prayer. This living word might perplex and rebuke us, challenge and unnerve us, surprise and delight us, nourish and fulfill us. Bread come from heaven, yet risen within us. Gift to the world, yet here, right beside us. Taste and see. Amen. We'll conclude our service by joining together in singing the blessing from CH4, number 796, The Lord bless you and keep you. If you stay seated and masked while you sing the blessing together. Thank you. 